The Northeast Conference on Science and Skepticism (NECSS), pronounced as Nexus, is a four-day conference focusing on science and skepticism held annually in New York City. Its purpose is exploring the intersection of science, skepticism, the media, and society for the purpose of promoting a more rational world. It was founded in 2009, run jointly by the New York City Skeptics and the New England Skeptical Society The Society for Science-Based Medicine joined as a full sponsor of the conference in 2015. Attendance is estimated at almost 500 people. Beginnings The New York City skeptics wanted to have a skeptical conference and invited magician James Randi to speak at their one-year anniversary. That lecture attracted over 400 attendees and so it was determined that there would be enough interest for a scientific skepticism conference in the area. The NYCS and NESS organizations began talks about combining to form NECSS. The conference began in 2009 as a one-day event. Popular science writer Carl Zimmer was the keynote speaker. Over the years, the conference has grown to include skeptics in the pub events, fundraising dinners, separately ticketed workshops and live podcast recordings. According to Stephen Novella and Evan Bernstein, the Ness was asked to speak for the New York City Skeptics, September 12, 2009. That lecture was a tribute to Perry DeAngelis died 2007, and as it was near the anniversary of both his birth and death in August, they continued the tradition of celebrating Perry at each conference. Even after the NECSS organizers decided to move the conference to April, the SGU cast continues to celebrate the life of Perry DeAngelis each year at NECSS. New York City Skeptics co-founder Jamie Ian Swiss writes that the conference was created because we felt there was a need for a regional skeptic conference in the Northeast, and because the organizers were intrigued by and attracted to the prospect of creating the concept and content of such an event. The first evening in 2009 was sold out with 400 attendees. According to MC Jamie Ian Swiss, organizers turned people away. Topic. Details According to co-organizer Michael Feldman, the conference regularly attracts about 400 attendees. In past conferences this has maxed out attendance, for 2015 they are using a venue that can hold up to 600 people. They want to continue to grow, but not to sacrifice quality with the conference experience. When asked what surprised him about the attendees he said, even though the title of our conference is the Northeast Conference on Science and Skepticism and it takes place in New York City, the attendees are only about half from the tri-state area, New York, New Jersey and Connecticut. A full 40-50% come from the rest of the United States and other countries." The 2016 conference attracted people from 10 countries and 30 states. The 2015 conference organizing committee is made up of Stephen Novella, Jay Novella, Michael Feldman, Jamie Ian Swiss, Benny Pollock, Spyro Condos, Mark Chrislip, Heather Berlin, Deborah Berebiches, and Brian Wecht. Others that have become involved in the conference are Massimo Pilucci and Julia Galliff. Full admission ticket prices does not include workshops or special events for Friday to Sunday for 2017 are $245 a person or $95 for students. Single day passes can be purchased for $120 or $55 for students. Individual workshop pass tickets are $35, and all workshop passes are $100. Workshops are organized into two tracks. Student scholarships are available. Topic highlights MC musician George Hrab outdrew the science-based medicine seminar in April 2015 with almost 500 attendees. His hybrid musical act, quiz show, a skeptical extravaganza of special significance pitted the SGU team and Bill Nye against each other with mock debates over the Millennium Falcon versus the Starship Enterprise, and the American system of units. Versus the metric system. HRAB also managed to add in rounds of Pictionary about Area 51 and water fluoridation. Stimulus response conceived by George HRAB and Brian Wecht was a three-act performance held on Friday night, and was separately ticketed from the conference. 
It was a night of discussion, performances and an improv comedy group. This group roasted Jay Novella in 2013, brother Steve wrote it was hilarious, so in 2014 Jay made sure that Steve was next. Bad astronomer Phil Platt and musician George Hrab performed a song Hrab wrote called Death from the Skies based on Platt's book by the same name. This performance has Harb playing guitar and signing This is the way the world will end with Platt speaking statistics about the likelihood of various astronomical deaths, such as meteors, supernovas, and solar flares. Doubtful news creator Sharon Hill compared the 2009 conference to the 2011 one. She felt that things were improving, great speakers, and wonderful meeting new people. She bemoans that it would cost less for the attendees if held outside New York City, but understands that for many people, this is a more convenient location. She also wishes that there were more quiet areas to allow for more socializing with old and new friends. In 2009 when Hill was attending the very first NECSS she mentions that the theme of the conference was very relative to her own current college degree work in science and the public. She says, the overarching theme was science portrayed to the public, how the media delivers a message, how even scientists screw up and take missteps, how we can get better. Magician and author Richard Wiseman performing at the 2009 conference explained in answer to a question by an attendee, people believe in the paranormal for many reasons, they might need to believe and it's possible that they have had personal experiences that convinced them. It is not clear to me that by robbing people of their beliefs, we always make the world a better place. According to James Randi, I recently appeared at the annual NECSS, Northeast Conference on Science and Skepticism, in New York. Think of it as a superb mini version of our annual The Amaz, Ing meeting in Las Vegas, and was asked to speak on the faith healing racket. As I walked on stage, I switched from my original intention, and decided to handle a specific example of the subject that I find very difficult to address, an example of the faith healer's perfidy and cruelty that I'd previously only mentioned in the introduction to the faith healers. When interviewed about the New York City skeptics, Julia Galliff responded, I think a lot of people felt the same way as you did, Carl, there seemed to be a lot of pent-up demand for an organization devoted specifically to science and reason, not just secularism. In terms of our success, I have to give a lot of credit to our president, Michael Feldman. He's a fantastic organizer, and the kind of person who really makes sure things get done. We've also got a dedicated team of volunteers, the Gotham Skeptic Blog, and of course our annual Northeast Conference on Science and Skepticism which sold out two years in a row and drew people from all over the U.S. and several other countries. The special Evening with James Randi event at the 9th Annual NECSS in 2017 was open to the public and is estimated to have drawn a crowd of over 600. Randi performed an escape and took an overdose of a homeopathic remedy to demonstrate that it had no actual effect. The focus of his talk was on educating the younger generation. The first day of the 2017 conference had to be relocated at the last minute due to an earlier fire at the Fashion Institute of Technology. Co-host of Star Talk podcast, Leanne Lord MC.2018 was the tenth year. The keynote speaker was Jennifer Willett. Katie Mack and Rachel Burks were part of a NECSS 2018 speakers explored the topic of sexual misconduct in the skeptics community in a panel named Psychom Meets Me Too. There was a full day of science-based medicine. Talks included David Gorski on the hype of stem cell treatments, Harriet Hall on the dangers of cancer vaccine manufactroversies, Clay Jones and Grant Ritchie on quack Tourette syndrome remedies, and Michael Marshall discussing his strategies with the Good Thinking Society that helped almost completely eliminate public medical funding for homeopathy in the United Kingdom. With a blending of new paths, old traditions, and new traditions, NECSS has taken its first steps in blazing a different trail in the future of skepticism. <laughs> Dawkins controversy In early 2016, the NECSS DIS invited the prominent evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins from speaking due to a tweet Dawkins had made in the weeks prior which drew parallels between extremist Islamists and extremist feminists. Many free speech advocates such as Sam Harris criticized the NECSS decision, labeling them, "...fools". In a press release the NECSS defended the decision stating, 
We believe strongly in freedom of speech and freedom to express unpopular, and even offensive, views. However, unnecessarily divisive, counterproductive, and even hateful speech runs contrary to our mission and the environment we wish to foster at NECSS. After much criticism, the NECSS apologized to Dawkins, admitted their disinvitation was not professional, and reinvited him, stating, there is room for a range of reasonable opinions on these issues and our conversation will reflect that diversity." Dawkins was unable to accept the re-invitation, as he had suffered a stroke in the interim. At NECSS 2016 a panel was designed to address what had happened with Dawkins. This panel was moderated by Jennifer Lopez from the Center for the Advancement of Science in Space. Also on the panel were Heather Berlin, Will Creel, Julia Galliff, John McWhorter and Yvette Dontremont and titled, "...Free Speech, Social Justice, and Political Correctness". According to journalist Russ Dobler the panel came to, "...common ground", by agreeing that unless the person you are talking to is completely unreasonable, we should seek out and talk to the people we disagree with most. Summary of past conferences equals equals gallery